Hi, I'm Tom. Thanks for joining me. We're going to talk about this 10 gallon tank and the change that it's about to go through to make it better. Join me. So let me talk about this tank. This is a 10 gallon aquarium, a substrate made of gravel, and we're going to discuss that plant in the back corner there and a little bit of just some aquarium sand, an unpotted plant that's been placed here for some temporary storage. If we get a little bit closer, standard heater and a hang on the box filter with some floating plants. Inside this aquarium is some uh, Danny Okiathids and some autocats a twig of a variety of java fern but I want to draw your attention over to this corner of the aquarium um, that is a German blue ram uh, she is now going on about two years and she was hatched here in my fish room that plant uh, was originally full in that corner and this tank has been set up for about two years two and a half years maybe and that plant was doing wonderfully and as you can see over the last actually this occurred probably over the last uh, week or so two weeks the whole entire tank and all the plant that used to fill up this entire portion of the aquarium has crashed and so I wondered what happened Nothing changed. All of the fish were in there. Um, no changes. And as you can see, there is some algae growing. And so I puzzled over this a great deal. One of the things I noticed and started having a problem with um, is some green slime algae. And down here, uh, let me see if I can get a better shot of this. You'll see this clump here. This is a some sort of gray algae. It's it's not quite Blackbeard. At least I don't think so. I've never really had a problem with that. Um, but yeah, it's not looking good. I've not been happy with this aquarium. This is probably its second or third third installment on redesign and upgrading filtration systems, making sure the heater was updated about a year ago, adding a power head for water circulation for the Danios. And I really was bothered by what was happening in this aquarium. So we're going to discuss what I'm about to do and the reasons why I am going to do this. So what am I going to do? Well, I've been doing some investigative work and some research on under gravel filters. Now this has been around old technology as we all know. Uh, these, these units just came in today as a matter of fact. Um, and so I actually accidentally ran into a YouTuber uh, who has been doing some very interesting videos that have caught my attention. And so I am going to adopt his uh, thought process on filtering water and getting uh, a complete nitrogen cycle going and just reworking that whole tank. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just pause this video. Uh, we've, we've all seen, you know, what a draining of a tank can do, but these are the project prod products I'm going to use fluval stratum and some secam fluorite, uh, red, and I am going to, uh, put this together and then we can go over how I'm going to do this and why I did what I did. And yes, as you can see, my, my entire fish room right now is just an absolute all right, so this is my progress so far. I've gotten the tank emptied. 
all of the fish are down here in this bucket. I've got some of the hardscape in this bucket, although the lights aren't going to let you see. Uh, I removed the plants that were kind of fading away on me. I did find some uh, pretty decent uh, root structures uh, on some plants that were runners, so I grabbed those and we're going to attempt to save them. Um, I distributed some of this uh, floating plant around some of the other aquariums because I know that the types of fish that I keep uh, are really going to appreciate that. So my next step here is to um, scoop out another couple of handfuls of gravel. I'm going to save that brown gravel. I'm going to siphon off, probably dump some clean water in there and just siphon off the rest of the substrate. I'm going to go ahead and give this a good quick clean and then I will be back and I will go through the process of showing you exactly how I am changing this system to a better way. Okay, as you can see, I finally have everything removed. I scrubbed out the algae that I saw that I felt was going to annoy me. Um, and I just wiped it down, clean water, washcloth, and we are now ready to put together the new system. Um, and I shouldn't say new, it's been around for a while, but I have been inspired by uh, uh, an individual on YouTube. I'll give them their names and their links in the video. Um, and uh, let's go through the process. So here we go. Okay, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to set up a plenum system in this tank and what I've done here is gone out and purchased uh, an under gravel filter for a 10 gallon aquarium, two plates. I'm only going to use one outlet here, stem, and I'm going to remove this uh, adapter piece because we're not going to be using that. And then uh, we're going to go through, I, before I do this and before I put down the actual substrate I'm going to use, um, let's go over the material that I'm going to use underneath this. Alright, so, um, I don't know if you can see here, but these are just some ceramic material that's found in uh, some of your common filters. I'm going to use this on the bottom, and then I'm going to put the under gravel filter plates on top of that. I'm not using that much. I'm keeping it towards the center of the aquarium. We'll spread them out a little bit because they can go around the place. Um, this will give the bacteria that's going to grow in this environment some place to live. Um, not necessary uh, per the instructions I have heard. However, I do have experience with a marine tank and you know, one of the one of the philosophies was always that uh, the more surface area you can provide bacteria to grow, um, the better. So there we go. Uh, that's actually just one bag. Um, I don't have the name of that material. What filter? I, it was a. That's actually a flu ball product. Dump that out. All right. Let's put this on, and we're just going to put the plates in place. They do have some interlocking mechanisms, but I really didn't think it was necessary to use them, so I'm not going to because they're going to sit pretty well tight next to each other. And I've opted to put the, put these backwards, um, I'm going to put the outlet on the back left corner. Look at this because I'm wondering. Yeah. All right, um, I'm gonna stop because um, I'm a little concerned here. Um, this ridge here, it's kind of a butt up here, and there's an opposite one, and it's not going to draw water from one side to the other. So I'm gonna take care of that. I'll need to trim this up, and I'll be right back. All right, so uh, if you can see here. 
all I did was take an X-Acto knife and I opened up these two chambers. Um, so now when these two plates meet, um, water can be drawn off on both sides of the plate. So the next step is let's get this in place. Um, I'm not exactly organized right now. Um, and I don't know what happened to my other plate. So let me just take a quick look around. Uh, here we go. All right, so I also did the same thing here. I just used a um, hobby blade and cut this, open them up. Um, so now these two pieces can fit together. I was really kind of puzzled as to what was going on. Um, but here we go. I'm gonna put these together, I'll kind of join it up as one unit. I wish they had come as one piece, but it is what it is. And we're gonna work with it. I think it might be better if I just put it in there. So let's go ahead. Start this again. Put this in. Remember, I got the material down here. Okay, they're finally locked together. Uh, it took me a little patience, but I got it done. I'm going to install. Um, this piece came like this. It was this size already. Um, the, the instructions were no more than two, maybe three inches high. I'm going to go with this high. It's pre-cut. It looks nice. I won't have to mess with it, um, and it's ready to go. So we'll just lock this in. And it goes and twist and there you go it's all set um, next um, these holes in the bottom of this plate are a little bit wide so when I go to put it on my substrate it's going to go through and I don't want that to happen I want this space to be maintained so because this is a good half inch of space from the bottom of the glass of the tank to the top of this unit. So what I'm going to do is I got some hobby mesh. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut that up and we're going to put it on. So I will be back with that. And there's no need for me to show you. All right, so we finally got this cut. Not we, me. Um, and I got it set to size. Uh, so it was a little awkward. Uh, so what I did was I took one piece and I cut it to size. And I cut another piece because it was a little bit over. So here we go. We got this this here, so it fits right there. Probably can't see it, but the one this is where the seam will be. But that's all right. It's just going to rest right there. And then for the little piece here up against the stem, I have cut the piece to fit nicely there. So the next step that we're going to do is we get to add um, the first layer of um, material for our um, substrate and what I'm going to use is some uh, secant fluorite <clears throat> very light la layer uh, not very thick then I have opted to use in this case for this tank Fluval stratum as an aquarium soil and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just top it off with uh, the aquarium gravel that came out of the tank I'm going to need to uh, get that uh, rinsed and washed and prepped for that just lightly because it's got a lot of detritus in there I don't really want to transfer that over I just want to wash it lightly so that any beneficial bacteria um, is going to come over with that substrate um, because these fish have to go back in this tank because right now I have nowhere else to put them so um, let's get started I'm going to pause the video once again and I'm going to get started on those couple of projects and we'll go over um, step by step uh, as it comes along. All right, so this is the ladder light uh, from CCAM um, fluoride. Uh, fluoride, I apologize. I really wanted lateral, laterite, but I really could not find it in my area. I have to order it. And I was a little anxious to get this started, but this was came across as a pretty good uh, alternative. It may not be the best, but I think with the steps that I'm taking that this should be a, um, a good option. Um, so what I'm gonna do, um, I don't want multiple layers of substrate showing through the glass here. So I'm gonna do this carefully, and I'm just gonna put a layer right here on the bottom. 
and I'm going to keep it away from the sides. Spread this out as a thin layer. Now, this, the mesh here will prove. Oh, my lights just went out. I'm really sorry. I'm going to get those adjusted, but um, we're going to spread this out. So give me a second. I'm going to turn these lights back on. They're all on a timer. So give me a second. Ah, I missed the recording, but I went ahead and I put in the flu ball stratum anyway. Um, it's just uh, me and technology. Um, it's just resting right here. It's about an inch and a half thick in the back, uh, going down to this mat. So it's just, what, not even a thin layer. It goes to about an inch and a half back here, which is fine. And the next step is going to be to um, get the gravel and put that on top. And I'm gonna, so I put this on, I poured it towards the back, brought it to the front carefully, now what I'm going to do is go ahead and get, I'm not going to, I don't want to see mixed gravel um, substrates. Um, and you missed my little funny story that did not get recorded. I had a friend, um, I still do, uh, she had gotten mixed gravel, uh, rainbow color. It was pink, blue, green, yellow, red, probably some orange, who knows. She hates, she hates mixed gravel. She spent an entire summer with buckets and she would sort the, each pebble out because she wanted a solid color. And she looked at my, she just does not like mixed, mixed substrates. <laughs> she likes the natural look. So really part of this is this video is for her as well so that she can see how this works. And what is happening and that's why I'm doing the video but also to show you that this this can be done and we're gonna follow this tank as I said in the beginning um, right through next year and we'll see how this does we'll see I, I, I have high hopes the science is real I'm following the science I've seen other individuals do this with their tanks and even from my own experience back in the 19 it was about 1982, One of the best tanks I had was a 20 long with an undergravel filter. And um, I, I, the water was crystal clear, really. And it was probably one of the best setups I ever had. Plants were growing like wildfire. And I'd have to clip them and sort them out and, and send, them, send them to other friends and bring them down to the, the local fish store I was working at, which is a whole other story. And, you know we should have a meet and greet sometime and you know I'll, I'll be more than welcome to share my background and um, yeah so that's the reason why I'm going back to this that's why I'm going back to this old technology because even though it's old technology it does not mean it's bad technology so all right let me get the uh, gravel rinse and I'll be right back all right so I'm back <clears throat> uh, this is a standard gravel um, I put the company is Estes. Uh, Estes has been around for a while, um, as long as I can remember. So I just uh, gently uh, rinse this out. Um, warm water, uh, similar temperature to what the water tank water was, just so um, you wouldn't kill off through boiling water. No need for that. Any of any uh, surviving bacteria that may be here, and I, I suspect is probably going to be So I'm just going to go ahead by handful by handful because I want to be careful here to make sure that we get this right. So this is what I mean. I did. I, I only wanted to see one level of substrate in the tank. I'm just going to tap this off. And I don't really care about the sides. Um, this is not... This was to be my experimental tank. Um, <clears throat> so, but it's... I've uh, gotten so many fish lately. I've gotten some really interesting species. I'm getting some more that hopefully in the next week. They're sick and I wasn't able to pick 
most of the weekend. Um, and just put this in here. And there's some leftovers from you know, um, the previous setup, but I don't care. It will sink to the bottom. Substrates tend to be tough to plant plants and keep them rooted. Uh, the gravel will add weight to it and allow them to stay hopefully where I put them once they're in here. Um, so I'm actually that's it. I don't have any more of this particular. I do have something similar. I'm just kind of piecing this together. I have a different size, I'm going to have to use the fill in, but it's pretty close to the color. And besides, in nature, nothing is perfect. So let me put this aside. Uh, this is a little bit bigger. Um, it's some leftover stone. It's a bigger granule size. I don't necessarily... Imagine spending a summer plucking out gravel. Yeah, I think no. It's a little lighter in the back. I can live with that. There we go. I'm gonna sprinkle some of this. This is a larger grain uh, gravel. I'm just gonna. Around and I did get two in the. I, there we go. I think it looks good. I don't think it needs to be any thicker than this. It's only a 10 gallon tank. Alright. Oh, yeah. So I do have the algae still on these rocks, but I don't care. Um, that looks nice. Alright. Uh, before we go any further, let me get uh, uh, this organized here. Get some tweezers and get these rocks that fell. Put this right the first time. And uh, let's see how good my surgery is going to work. Look at that shake. All right, good thing I'm not your heart surgeon. There you go. All right. So, all I have to do now, right, is get this filled up with water. And because I saved the water from this egg, because of right mass is going to hold on to its temperature, we're going to get some rocks in here. All right, so we're going to set this up a little bit. Um, Let me swap this out. Uh, yeah. Everything's a mess. Apologize. Here we go. All right. Let me see something. I got some. Uh, interesting pieces. Alright, I think I got three pieces here. We'll do a little. We'll see what we can do here. Uh, when I set up a tank with decor, I like to make sure that nothing is too close to the glass so I can get in there and clean it. I am not an aquascaper. I'm getting better. But, here we go. Alright, let's see here. Oh, yeah, the water's warm. We can put the 
fish right back in with no problem. And I like my driftwood, so I am going to push this down. And I don't really care that has algae on it. Let's see. Maybe we make something interesting here. What I do is get uh, oh, I have one more piece of wood here. There we go. You might have three. So I got it fairly well cleaned out. So in order not to disturb the bed as I pour the water, I'm going to gently use my pour it out. I'm going to use my hand to deflect the water. So you can see where the substrate kind of came up through the ground. That's all right. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. <clears throat> all right. So at this point, I have hooked up the nozzle with the air stone at the bottom and the stem to supply the air. Um, all that's left is to uh, fill the rest of the aquarium. Um, I'm going to use a whisper. Tetra brand, one of the uh, lowest pump numbers I could get. This was a number 20 for up to 20 gallons. Um, and then we're going to have to set the uh, rate, the flow from the aquarium. And I'm going to do that first before I fill it because I need to know how much water that's really pushing. I don't want it to push a lot of water. What I want it to do is just to move a little bit of water. Why is that? Because as I'm pulling water out from there, water has to right, go through the substrate, down through this new plenum, sit there, and then it'll migrate over and then be forced out through the air bubbles. You want to do it slowly. Um, the best way I can describe this is I'm trying to set up an environment that's not totally anaerobic or lacking oxygen, lacking oxygen. And I don't want a high oxygen environment. I want something in between to facilitate the bacterial growth underneath those two plates that was installed earlier. So let me get this plugged in, let me get it hooked up, and then we'll go through the rest of the process of finishing this project up, and um, I'll see you on the flip side. All right, so I've got the um, pump up and running. Um, I've got it hooked up to the airstone, and I can tell just by the rate here that this is going to be too high. So I'm going to have to somehow come up with a way to bleed off some of this excessive um, air that's being pumped because I don't want it running that fast. Um, that's that's 
going to be a generalized um, underground filter, you know. Uh, I, that's not the type of stuff I, that's not the rate that I was looking for. So I have to go find some valves and um, we'll get that fixed up real, real quick. All right. There we go. That's what I want. I think that's a good, uh, that should be a good flow rate. Alright, so let's pour the rest of the water in. We're going to get the fish in, and I'm going to take out the heater. We're going to put the heater back in, and I think we're going to call it. <clears throat> there you go. That's how I install a plenum. I'm going to install one on uh, probably this 20 long that's over to my, my left. Um, I'm not exactly sure when. That is going to be a huge project because uh, I'm going to have to do the same thing, but it's twice the scale. I need more buckets. I've got enough substrate for this one. Um, I have to make the undergravel filter, and I'll show you what I'm going to use to do that with. Um, and then on that, I think we're good to go. Um, if you want more information about this, then I'm going to uh, have a link to this video below. I want you to start looking at it, looking at his YouTube and listening to the science behind what he is talking about. If you don't believe him or if you don't believe me that this should work, then do further research because everything he has said has made sense. So I'm going to give it a try. What have I heard? nothing. As you can see, the fish are just as happy. I'll top it off with some fresh water. I'll reinstall the uh, power filter um, and and we'll check in them on tomorrow. I'll give them, feed them tomorrow. I'm not going to stress them out any more than what they already are. And that's it. So with that, I thank you for watching. I look forward to your replies. Um, if you like what I say, then you know. let me know if you want to do a meet and greet. I'd be more than happy to sit in on a live stream, answer any questions, talk about my background, what I know, what I don't know. Um, I have been in the pet industry since 1970. Uh, I got started with aquarium fish in 1977. Um, I got a sort of volunteer job at a pet shop in 1978. I used to hang out there. It's a whole interesting story. I'd be more than happy to discuss it. And I worked for that store for uh, close to 20 years. Um, and it, it, so I'm an oldie, right? I'm, that's why when I talk about this, the plenum and showing you how to install it, yeah. Go back, watch the original videos. I didn't invent this. This is, I didn't, I didn't invent this. I, I am doing more of an educational thing as to showing you how easy it is to do. But all my, any, any information I know, I will give credit where credit is due. And you can find a link to his video. As I said here, I encourage you to look at it, watch it. He has more information than I could ever ever give you um, so with that I thank you for watching again let me know what you think in the comments below and I will do more follow-ups and more videos as an educational from the viewpoint of a oldie I guess or the way I like to do things and what works for me until then let me know what you want to know I'll see you on the other side